So, you're tired of using these and these? You'd rather use one of these, but you don't have enough of these? Well, watch this. You know, it's no surprise that most woodworkers aren't exactly fond of finishing. So it's only natural that eventually they're going to look for an easier way to do things. And one of those ways is spraying. Now, spraying has a pretty big barrier to entry. You either need a really powerful compressor that can handle the amount of air output that you need, or you go for one of these portable turbine units, which are really expensive. I mean, really, they're anywhere from $600 to over $1,000. It's a pretty hefty chunk of change for someone to plunk down just for finishing. So over the years, I've kind of seen some of these less expensive units on the market, and I've never really had the opportunity to test them out, so I haven't been able to recommend them. And that's what I want to change today. I got a chance to get a hold of one of these Erlex Pro 5000 systems. It's a two-stage turbine, and it's very fairly priced. And uh, I would love nothing more than to give a wholehearted recommendation for this unit so that you can use it in your shop. So. Let's take a closer look. And before we go too far, I just want to take a moment to set the right expectation. This is not going to be a full review of the Erlex. It's more like me just putting it through its paces and taking the camera along for the ride and letting you guys see the results. I'm not exactly going to do a side-by-side -side spray pattern check from one to the other. I'm not going to test every finish in the world. I'm just going to do the most common stuff that I would normally use. Because if I would use this in my shop, then I can wholeheartedly recommend it to you guys as well. So, although we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison between them, you know, we have to take that with a grain of salt. This unit costs over twice as much, so of course some of the components are going to be of a higher quality. But we can't necessarily ding this guy for that, because sometimes you don't need all that extra quality. So, just want to make sure that that was straightened out before we go into it, and um, let's have some fun. Alright, let's see what comes with the package here. Okay, this is the turbine unit itself. You can see that the cord is stored down on the bottom. That's pretty nifty. And here is our air hose. And usually you'll find these things have a pretty generous length. So you don't have to carry the unit around all the time. It looks like this guy can live in there, which is pretty convenient. There's the on off button in the front here. Now the gun. The gun looks pretty good. I was really impressed. Um, it's got some nice weight to it. The air hose itself. Come back here. Pops in there. Okay, the, um, the one thing I could definitely see, you it looks like you have to grip this a certain way. You have to have your two fingers underneath this little rib here, because otherwise you're going to bang your fingers into uh, the lid of the little pot there. So that's, I guess I could get used to that. It's not too much of a problem. It just feels a little bit foreign at first, where here you can grip it any number of ways. Not that big of a deal though. Uh, let's see what else. Everything is pretty standard HVLP fare. You've got your uh, needle and nozzle set here. Comes with one. That's pretty standard. You can get different sizes. Uh, everything here, not much difference. Okay, there's the release system. Same thing here. So I've got no complaints about the gun. That looks really good. Really, it comes down to how does it spray. A gun can look like crap, but spray beautifully. Uh, the rest of the kit has a viscosity cup. Again, that's pretty standard to test the uh, viscosity of the liquids that you're going to spray and whether or not you need to, uh, to dilute them at all for spraying. It has a little cleaning kit that comes with it, which is a really nice bonus. And um, it's got this thing. I don't know what the hell you're supposed to do with that. but Now, it's always good to know how loud these things are. And for tests like this, I have this little sound level meter. It's a Radio Shack special. And I'm going to connect each one of these and compare how loud they are. Now the noise level is certainly not indicative of overall quality. The spray quality is what really counts. 
But if you're doing long hours and uh, you don't necessarily want to wear ear protection constantly, you know, the sound can be an issue. And, and a lot of times these are great to take on site. I've taken this guy, you know, a ton of different places. Uh, we did a big refinishing job inside of a restaurant and they were still, uh, there was other stores around there that were still open for business. So it was important that we keep the noise level down. So let me just uh, connect the Fuji and get a reading there. It's about 81, 82 decibels. And let's try the Erlex. Now that's coming in at about 99 decibels, so it is a little bit louder. But again, it doesn't necessarily mean much if you're just doing work in your shop. Performance is really going to come down to how it sprays. Now, as I went to, uh, to wrap everything back up, I noticed one little thing that's uh, going to make a big difference in the long run. Having a place to put the gun that's secure, that's not going to fall over, is actually a very big deal, especially one that's close to the vicinity of where you're working. Can't count how many times I've tried to put this down somewhere and it's fallen over. And you can see how the, uh, the hose connects into the bottom of the handle, so my only real option is to either hang it or to rest it on something where the, uh, the cup can actually sit stable and the rest of it just hangs off, which still, I mean, when it's filled with liquid, it is a little more stable, but you obviously have a, a tip hazard here. So I wind up having to disconnect it and then sitting it down. This is incredibly convenient to have sitting here, so that's awesome. Now, a couple of weeks have actually gone by since that last scene, and I've had some really great opportunities to work with the Erlex. Um, I went actually on location to a previous client of mine's house and I needed to uh, spray a new coat of finish on top of a table. And I don't normally spray oil-based finishes very much. I mean, once in a while I might do it as a special technique for uh, a final coat, very thin coat of poly or something. Um, so I figured I'd give it a shot and I took the Erlex along with me. I brought the Fuji as a backup just because you never know. And it was fantastic. It performed great. No problems, it was actually you know, nice and light. It was a nice uh, change of pace to have a nice light system with a, a good handle and everything built right in. It was very convenient. So I was happy with the way it sprayed oil. I don't really expect that to be too much of a challenge for it to begin with. Uh, but what I wanna show you today is a water-based finish. And I think that's primarily what I'm gonna dedicate this gun to in the future anyway. Um, so with water-based finishes, you have to, um, this cap is on here pretty tight. You know, about four years ago, I bought one of these Craftsman Dojabi rubber things, and uh, I haven't used it yet, because I knew one day, one day, I was going to have a need for it, and folks, that day is today. I don't know why the heck that was on there so tight. Anyway, I probably had a little bit of dried finish on there, which would be my bad for not cleaning it properly. So the basic anatomy that we're looking at here with this guy is pretty straightforward. It's actually a little bit simpler than what I have on the Fuji. Okay, you take this ring off of here. Inside there is this, um, you know, I don't know what any of the official names for this stuff are. I know that this basically is what distributes the air. You've got little tiny holes inside here um, that sort of uh, dictate what the spray pattern is going to be. Okay, now to get the, the tip off of here, you actually need to use the supply tool. This is, again, this is all pretty standard stuff. That loosens pretty easily. Okay, and what I have here is a two millimeter tip. Okay. The tip comes off and you can see the needle, it's poking out there. So you just take this off the end, there's a little spring here, and then you can pull out the needle. Now when you order different needle sets, what you're gonna get is this. You're gonna get the tip and the needle itself. Okay, and both of those are essential for changing the amount of liquid that's going to flow through the gun. 
So basically there's a little opening here at the tip and this needle is sized to fit in that location there, okay, and that's two millimeters. So each one of these different sizes, whether it's one, one and a half, two and a half, they're all slightly larger or smaller. And what that does is just allows more uh, viscous liquids to flow through. So if you're doing something with latex paint, for instance, you're going to want one that opens up pretty wide so you can get that thick liquid through the tip. Uh, I believe the system comes with the two millimeter and I did go ahead and pick up the, um, the other sizes and I'll explain why. With water-based finishes, you don't necessarily have the option to thin very much. So instead of really thinning your liquid or thinning your, um, your finish to, to get the right consistency, the best thing to do is to switch needle sizes. Uh, so I've been experimenting with different needles and, and just playing with different uh, settings. And I gotta tell you, that so far I've had a lot of luck uh, using multiple needle uh, sizes. So that's a good sign. So the two is okay, but I think I'm gonna switch to, let me try the one and a half. I'm gonna go a little bit smaller so I can really make sure that I atomize the water-based finish. Each of these have a number printed on them, so it's very easy to keep them straight. Okay, now this, there's also a little uh, spring-based unit in here, and this is what allows the, uh, the nozzle on the end to turn into different positions and change the spray pattern. It's kind of nice because this one, it's actually attached to the spring, so you don't lose it. I know on my Fuji, Oops, see? It's separate. And sometimes you got you know, you get confused on which end is up or down and it's a little easier. I find that system on the Erlex a little bit easier to, to assemble. So now putting this guy back together, I'm gonna put the tip in first. Screws in place. Use the tool to tighten it. Make it super tight, just tight enough. Let's put the spring back in. Okay, this guy stays here, and then the ring goes on top of that. Insert the needle through the back. And what you'll notice is the needle then pokes out the front, and the handle is what controls the position of that needle as it goes forward and back. Okay, place the spring on it, and then I put on this little screw here. And now as you tighten and loosen this knurled knob back here, you e increase and decrease the amount of fluid that goes through. And you can see, we'll do it outside. As you hold the trigger down, you could turn this counterclockwise and it opens it up and you get a lot of fluid. Or if you turn it clockwise, it closes it down and you get just a, a light mist. Now lint and debris and things like that are your worst enemy when it comes to spraying. So I use these little paper uh, mesh paint filters that I get, basically buy them in bulk. I'll try and put up some links, but usually I buy them in bulk on uh, Amazon.com and then it's pennies a piece. I'm going to use some polyacrylic here, general finishes, just as a uh, a test material. Pour through the filter. Now these water-based finishes, it's, it's a little bit trickier when you're spraying these because it's not quite like solvent-based finishes where you know you could thin them out pretty far to get them so that the, the right viscosity and the right consistency for spraying. Um, Water-based finishes, on the other hand, you don't really want to thin them too much. Uh, 10 to 15 percent is about as far as I go. And in fact, what I usually do is thin it out a little bit with some water. But this filter, a lot of times I like to reuse the filter. As cheap as it is, I still do it. Um, especially if I'm going to do multiple um, coatings, I'm going to go through a couple cans. So each time I fill it, I don't want to use a new filter. So instead of pouring the water directly into here, it can't hurt to filter the water, right? So I just pour water into the filter. Not only does it do the dilution that I need it to do, uh, but it also cleans the filter for me. Now with these water-based finishes, you do have to pay attention to that tip size. You can't necessarily rely on the water uh, to get you where you need to go. So you have to be clever about 
varying things like air pressure, needle size, other um, attributes of the spray system to get the right consistency so that you can spray. Now, um, this is not the first time I'm spraying the water-based material here, and I've tried it on a few different needle sizes with different amounts of fluid, opening up the fluid, closing it down. And I gotta be honest with you, I've had pretty good results with everything that I've done. I haven't had anything that I walked away from going, oh, that's, that's not gonna work, you know. Um, that wouldn't be finished quality or something that I would put on a piece of furniture. Uh, each and every time it was something that was definitely good enough and certainly something that I would be able to work with. And that was my first time really playing with the gun too much. So we'll continue to, uh, to experiment a little bit. I'm gonna just show you guys how this one works out using the one and a half tip and we'll spray some sample boards, take a look at them. You'll see that, I don't know how much you're gonna catch on, uh, on the camera as far as the, the, the fan spray and the atomization and things, but you sort of just have to take my word for it on that stuff, but you'll get a little bit of footage and see what it looks like. So give it a little bit of a shake, make sure everything is well mixed. Not too aggressive on the shake, just a little swirl. And let's go outside. <laughs> Now, I don't normally spray paint very much. A lot of times if I do full-on colors, I'll do a tinted lacquer or something like that. But I know a lot of you are gonna wanna know, can this thing handle paint? So let's give it a shot. All right, so what's the verdict? Uh, I've sprayed water-based, I've sprayed oil-based, I've sprayed nitrocellulose lacquer, some pre-cat lacquer, I've even sprayed some latex paint, some dyes. I pretty much run this thing through all of the common finishes and of course with the latex paint, some of the things that I will never even spray. A um, few of the results, here's uh, just the test board that I did earlier and of course it had some dye on it and you can see I'll try and get the light to hit that surface. And that's two coats of a water-based finish on there. Okay, what we're looking for is just a nice, even, consistent finish laid down, no orange peel, no texture to it, just nice and clean so the wood itself can really speak to you instead of the finish speaking to you. It's never a good thing when the, uh, the clear coat, you know, makes a statement. Um, the latex paint experiment went okay. I mean, like I said, I don't spray much latex, so you know, if it looks painted and it's not an excessive amount of texture on the surface, then I think it did okay. Now, I will say with the two and a half tip, the biggest tip that I have, it was a little bit orange peely as it went on. And when it dried, it was relatively level and flat. But by going to a smaller tip, I was able to increase the atomization, make those little particles smaller, and it actually went on quite a bit smoother. So that's probably what I would recommend is going a little bit smaller on the tip size. Um, everything else, oil-based, was fine. I had no problems there. I think oil-based and the solvent-based lacquers um, are going to be the most predictable things. I find those the easiest to spray anyway. The challenges are the water-based and, of course, paint, things along those lines. Now, I've even gotten this thing dialed in where I was doing some dyes, and I got the pressure down or the, the fluid control down really tight, and you're able to get just that really fine, atomized dye that's perfect for toning and it's very valuable if you're ever fixing furniture, doing color matches, um, you know, differential colors, uh, if you have a certain area masked off. You want to be able to control that overspray and just have a nice fine atomization, a nice fine spray, and I was able to do that with this unit. Now, in the last few weeks, there have been a couple times since I started playing with this guy that I've had a choice. You know, which, which gun do I use? Do I use my old Fuji? Do I use this guy? And honestly, being a person who is a fan of simplicity, I keep going back to the Erlex. And I know what I can do with my Fuji, and it's not so much that I just, I mean, I did want to test this guy, but there was actually a true desire to go back to this gun, simply because 
the adjustments are limited to, you know, basically two things. You know, I adjust um, which needle I have and I adjust the flow of liquid. Whereas on the Fuji, I've got an airflow, I've got a fan control, uh, of course the needles as well. There's just a lot more to it. And that's fine because sometimes you need that control, but sometimes you don't. And I think in a lot of cases with, uh, you know, home shop woodworkers and hobbyists, if you're not doing production work, this, I think, is a great option. So, I mean, I, I don't, like I said, I'm not a big fan of doing official reviews, but the product's in my hands. I enjoyed it. It's something that I probably will uh, use as my go-to quick gun that I don't have to worry about. There's not an excessive amount of setup. It doesn't take me long to get it from sitting in the corner to the point that the gun's in hand ready to spray, and that's important to me. So if you're, uh, if you're venturing into the, the world of spray finishing, I think this Orlex unit is probably a good way to, to get your foot in the door without spending a ton of dough. So I say thumbs up. Nice job, Orlex. It's a great unit.